What's going on everybody? It's Nick and this is your second stimulus check stimulus package update video. Now we've got lots of breaking stimulus news to cover in today's video, but before we get into that, let me quickly invite you to hit that subscribe button below, turn the bell notification icon on so you don't miss any of my stimulus package second stimulus check update videos. Now with that out of the way, let's get straight into today's news. On Tuesday, December 1st, President-elect Joe Biden called on Congress to pass a compromise COVID relief package before he takes office during the lame duck presidency. And right now, the full Congress should come together and pass a robust package for relief to address these urgent needs. But any package passed in a lame duck session is likely to be at best just a start. My transition team is already working on what I'll put forward in the next Congress to address the multiple crises we're facing, especially our economic and COVID crises. That same day, a group of Republican and Democrat congressmen and women answered Biden's call for compromise by announcing a new bipartisan stimulus plan. The plan calls for $908 billion in stimulus for Americans. The group includes senators and members of the House of Representatives, including the 50 members of the Problem Solvers Caucus. The group announced their plans during a press conference that day. During the press conference, Democratic Senator from West Virginia, Joe Manchin, had this to say. We're battling COVID-19 more fiercely now than we ever have before. We recognize that. It's inexcusable for us to leave town and not have an agreement. Um, it's not the time for political brinkmanship. Uh, you'll not see any of that here today on this stage. Uh, our bipartisan bicameral group, uh, as I said, has worked over the past month. Uh, we're pleased to present to you today uh, a template or a framework, if you will, uh, that's put together by senators and representatives uh, uh, from their respective caucuses. Uh, our action to provide emergency relief is needed now more than ever before. The people need to know that we are not going to leave until we get something accomplished or this group has worked together so diligently. Here are some of the other highlights from that press conference. It would be stupidity on steroids if Congress left for Christmas without doing an interim package uh, as a bridge. When asked whether Democratic leadership supported the plan, Senator Manchin had this to say. And have you gotten any assurances from Speaker Pelosi or Leader McConnell that they will put this on the House and Senate floors for a vote? We have not had assurances from them on that for a vote, but I think the American people will put the pressure showing that there's a group of us coming together that this needs to be done. Then when asked whether President Trump and the White House supported this plan, Senator Romney from Utah responded as follows. We have communicated with Secretary Mnuchin about our negotiations. Uh, he hasn't weighed in as to whether he agrees or disagrees. Uh, he's offered some advice in terms of figures. Uh, we've we've uh, wondered, for instance, what was the right number for airlines? Uh, what did they need? What did bus companies need and so forth? And he provided some of the information from the negoti negotiations he had had with Speaker Pelosi. But I, I don't have any prediction on how the White House would react. We've also communicated with the majority leader's office about uh, what we're working on, but, but uh, neither has described uh, whether they would support or, uh, or not support uh, what we've put together. I would say, let me just say one thing. Uh, Minority Leader Schumer uh, has also been kept in, uh, up to speed on this. Uh, and with that, he's encouraged for us to continue to work in a bipartisan way, bicameral way, to come to an agreement. So what exactly is in the bipartisan stimulus package that was recently announced? Well, the package calls for $288 billion for support for small businesses. The plan also calls for $160 billion to state, local, and tribal governments. The plan calls for $180 billion in additional unemployment insurance and various other allocations of that money totaling up to $908 billion. The plan also calls for short-term federal protection from coronavirus related lawsuits with the purpose of giving states time to develop their own response. Noticeably absent from this stimulus plan is a second round of stimulus checks, unfortunately. Now, subscribe to this channel though to find out if a second round of stimulus checks makes it into the final version of this plan and then can pass Congress. 
Meanwhile, while the bipartisan group of lawmakers were introducing their new plan, White House Stimulus Negotiator and Secretary of Treasury Steven Mnuchin was testifying about stimulus in a Senate Banking Committee hearing. A targeted fiscal package is the most appropriate federal response. I strongly encourage Congress to use the $455 billion in unused funds from the CARES Act to pass an additional bill with bipartisan support. I think those small businesses need grants. They don't need loans. My decision is a legal decision, not an economic decision. Congress can reauthorize this money. When Mnuchin emerged from the hearing, reporters caught up to him and asked him what he thought about this new bipartisan stimulus plan. Here's what he had to say. Secretary yes. Mnuchin, what do you think of this Senate gang rollout, the legislation they're working on? Um, you mean what they did earlier today? Uh, because I've, I've been in uh, testifying all morning. I haven't had an opportunity to review it, but I'll be doing it when I go back to the office. I, I appreciate that there is some bipartisan support. Any thoughts on Janet Yellen as possible assessment? Just hours after the bipartisan group of lawmakers announced their new $908 billion stimulus plan, Mitch McConnell threw cold water on it in a press conference where he announced a competing stimulus plan that he had apparently discussed with the White House. Let me tell you where I think we are. Uh, Leader McCarthy and I have been in discussions with the Secretary of the Treasury and the President's Chief of Staff to try to ascertain what the President would actually sign into law. And I think we have a sense of what that is. I think the one thing we all agree on is that we don't have time for messaging games. Uh, we don't have time for lengthy negotiations. The issue is do we want to get a result? And I like to remind everybody that the way you get a result is you have to have a presidential signature. So I felt the first thing we needed to do was to find out what uh, the president would in fact sign. We believe we've got the answer to that. We're vetting that on our side. And then we'll let you know later whether we think uh, there's any uh, way forward. We just don't have time to waste time. We have a couple of weeks left here. Obviously, it does require bipartisan support to get out of the Congress, but it requires a presidential signature. And this government is in place for sure for the next month. And I think the place to start is, are we actually making a law or are we just making a point? And I think the way you make a law for sure is you know you've got a presidential signature. So. We'll see how it goes forward. I think the one thing we all agree on, as I said, waiting till next year is not an answer. We need a targeted relief bill, including things that we can agree on. McConnell made no mention of the $908 billion bipartisan bill, but said that the spending bill that Congress must pass this month may be a vehicle for passing the next stimulus package. Well, first, we're working really hard to finish up the omnibus bill, as uh, Senator Blunt pointed out. Obviously, given the challenges of moving things across the Senate floor speedily, that would be a vehicle to add on whatever coronavirus relief bill we know will get a presidential signature. And obviously, as was discussed earlier, it'll have to have Democratic votes to get through the House. But I, I think it'll all likely come in one, in one package. So how does McConnell's plan differ from the bipartisan stimulus plan that was recently announced? Well, the plan looks a lot like the previous two skinny stimulus bills that Republican senators tried to introduce and put to a vote in the Senate in September and October. It's around $500 billion in stimulus and of that amount, $332.7 billion would go to small businesses, including PPP funding, $105 billion of it for schools, and $31 billion for vaccine distribution, therapeutics, and medical supplies. The plan also contains a sweeping liability shield for businesses and other organizations. McConnell's plan, of course, does not include another round of stimulus checks, nor does it include any funding for state or local governments. On Wednesday, December 2nd, Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer released a joint statement in which they expressed support for the bipartisan stimulus plan, writing, 
In the spirit of compromise, we believe the bipartisan framework introduced by senators yesterday should be used as the basis for immediate bipartisan bicameral negotiations. The Democratic leaders said that they plan to offer improvements to the plan, but finally appeared to acknowledge that a passable plan is better than a perfect plan at this point. Pelosi and Schumer concluded their statement by calling on Mitch McConnell to sit down with the Democrats to finally come to a true bipartisan effort that meets the country's needs. Now, this is big news. If you follow this channel, you know that this is the first time we've heard Pelosi and Schumer express a willingness to back down from their all or nothing $2.2 trillion stimulus demand. Top Republican senators have also expressed support for this new bipartisan stimulus plan. All eyes are now turned on Mitch McConnell. The pressure is increasing on him to come to the table and compromise as the Democratic leadership have. With that being said, the deadline for passing a spending bill in Congress is December 11. McConnell has said that that may be the vehicle on which to attach a stimulus package. So as we approach December 11, expect the stimulus negotiations to heat up until we get to that December 11th deadline. Until then, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and click the bell notification icon if you have not done so already so you don't miss any of my update videos on the second stimulus check and stimulus package negotiations. Now, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.